Thanks to the supporters of channel member Nathan Rowley. Well, this is a strange thing to be saying ever. This is going to be Burton Albion playing in the Premier League. Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 22 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games ever in the Premier League. And for those of you who have been moaning that Non-League to Legend this year has been a little bit easy, I'll counter that with two things. One, for years people have been asking me to do all of the promotions on the way to the Premier League. We've done it. We got from the National League North to League 2 with Tamworth, and then we went from League 2 to the Premier League with Burton. So we've done every single promotion on the way in consecutive years. But if you still think it's too easy, um, we're going to get absolutely smashed this season. Absolutely walloped. The step up to the Premier League is the biggest step up of all. I have been, I mean, it's been known in saves I've done in the past for it to take 10 seasons to get from being promoted into the Premier League to being competitive for winning the Premier League. And they were with teams much better suited to being here. This is the smallest team I've ever got to the Premier League with. And I've done Nun Eaton and Home and various other tiny clubs. But by the time we got them to the Premier League, we were either ground sharing or had bigger grounds. And I mean, we've, we're have we going to set the record for the smallest ever attendance for a Premier League football match. Our attendance, our capacity. I mean, I can't even work out what our capacity currently is. Are we actually saying we're going to get 6,000 people in the ground? I find that hard to believe when the capacity is supposed to be reducing as part of putting 2,500 seats in. Logistically, there's no way we can get 6,000 people in, but it is football manager, so anything's possible. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to find out just how good our team is ish um, because we're going to be away from home against a team that got promoted with us last year Sunderland and they were actually the last team you saw us play in a video and we beat them comfortably and won the championship they've spent a lot more money than we have this summer just gone though and we really need our excellent attack to step up to take on the Premier League because the one downside of our entire defence being loans last year is we've had to spend pretty much our entire £30 million Premier League transfer budget on defenders, some of which were already here. We've not really improved the team at all over the summer. Let's see how good they are at the Premier League level. So it's new boy Bender in goal, a back four that comprises two new fullbacks and a now permanently signed Jackson. Um, so it's so, uh, Sousa, Kitching, Jackson and Popov at the back. Alonso and new boy Loser in midfield. And then the front four, which is the same front four that was in such good form at the end of last season. Vidovic, Divine, O'Donoghue and Lieburn. That's last season's championship top scorer. Previously, our all-time record signing and a guy who made it onto the actual next-gen top 20. So, and he's six foot five. The front four, I have no worries about. Um, the midfield loser needs to be good. And the defence, Liam Kitching starting, is alarming because he only started 18 games was in the championship last year. He's not a Premier League defender. I don't know that Bender's a Premier League goalkeeper, to be honest. This, uh, this could be painful, but I guess... It's a good thing that we get to play Sunderland first because at least they're a team that we should be capable of beating. We certainly beat them last year. Oh, by the way, we don't have an assistant manager. He's gone to Brighton, so we're trying to replace him. Second season in a row, I think, we've had to start with no assistant manager. So that's not ideal So I'm having to do my own pesky team talks again. And uh, Sunderland have obviously been able to spend a lot more money and have a much bigger stadium than we have, as you can see. Look at the state of this. They're much better equipped to stay in the Premier League, even though we were a better team than them last year when we both got promoted together. But they have got a corner here. And hopefully Lee Byrne is still, uh, still going to be super effective at both ends of the pitch when it comes to these set pieces. We scored 22 goals from set pieces in the Championship last year. It was the highest set piece record in the Championship. And I think if we're going to have any chance of scraping survival this year, we need to be capitalising on those set pieces again. Get the ball onto Lee Byrne's head as often as possible and hope that we cause chaos with it. It's Sousa playing it across. There's O'Donoghue at the far post, but he couldn't get there ahead of the Sunderland defender. And uh, it remains nil-nil as we're about halfway through 
this first half and Sunderland are attacking down this right hand side cross comes over and shot from the edge of the area and the first time Bender's really been tested he fails the test it's 1-0 to Sunderland if we lose today this is going to be a long long season we're still hopefully being able to bring in some loans when we hit deadline day when they get a little bit cheaper so I think we should be able to strengthen the squad a little bit, but it's not going to get significantly better than it is right now. So, um, yeah. <laughs> if anyone could lend me like a hundred million pounds, that address, because the other thing is I was very well behaved in the transfer special in that I didn't do loads of transfers on the never, never. I didn't want to get the club into a huge amount of transfer debt. I wanted to keep the club running sustainably because we're all about realism in non-league legend. This is a very sustainable football club. We spent a lot of money on the facilities. So we needed to do a sustainable transfer window as well. And uh, yeah, we've changed divisions every season of non-league legend so far. We might be getting relegated this year and have to come back up again. <laughs> we, we'll see, I guess. We've had some pretty pathetic Premier League performances in previous non-league legends as well. I think a few years ago when we got Peterborough to the Premier League and I think I probably had a better squad than this, had a better transfer window than this. Um, we uh, we ended up, I think, bottom of the league about halfway through and I got headhunted away to another club. So there's always the possibility of that. I might be able to escape. Right, let's bring Joe Powell on and we'll put Loser up there as the attacking midfielder. Sousa's going to come off. Galvez can come on. Um, and Vidovic, worryingly, hasn't uh, hasn't looked as good as I hoped he would look after being all-conquering and awesome last season. Stevanovic can come on. We're going attacking. We're going to demand more. Um, it's I mean, Sunderland haven't utterly dominated us, but seriously, if we can't beat Sunderland, a team we finished above last year, we are in a whole load of trouble. Jack Clayton's going to come on here. Alonso. Um, we can drop Souza back there and bring on Patrick Roberts, the former Sunderland guy. Maybe he'll be motivated to come on and do a goal. We're going to go very attacking as well. Stephen Bender's six foot four. So if we can get him going forward for corners, that's another big aerial threat. Maybe, maybe that'll be key. Uh, please, can we do something? Give us a corner or something. We should be... Right, we've got a corner. Here's an opportunity. Cross comes in. Jackson's the one who ends up on the end of it rather than Lee Byrne, which is not ideal and he's not able to make a proper contact and it remains 1-0. Well, no, we're now going for a long throw with Powell, who's never been very good at them but always seems to take them and I don't know why. I think it's just because he's the captain. Similar to the penalty situation, he's the captain and he likes taking them, so he takes them. Um, Joe Powell, by the way, with that substitute appearance, has now played with Burton in all four leagues of English football, which is a nice little achievement for him. Ross Stewart has the potential to be able to do the same thing as well. We signed him down in League Two. Um, he sat on the bench today. Uh, but, I mean, it's not much consolation when we've come to a team we're supposed to be better than and not looked very good and lost very comfortably. Powell with another long throw-ish from the other side. Lieburn plays it off to Stevanovic and we've got a consolation goal. I think it's going to be no more than that. I mean, we said set pieces are going to be crucial and that was very well worked. Set piece, aim at Lieburn. He either scores or lays it off to a teammate. We're going to need to do a lot of this this season and that was actually a well worked set piece. But unfortunately, it's too little too late. We've lost 2-1, but Stevanovic is the first man in history to score a Premier League goal for Burton Albion. Please, can we have an assistant manager before the next match? Please? The answer was no, we can't have an assistant manager because work permits. So hopefully he'll be in place in time for the next match, which is against Liverpool. So that should be fine. No changes for the game against Brighton because we don't really have a squad to rotate. So we go with what was beaten comfortably by Sunderland and hope we get some set pieces go away. The big question, of course, is what state is the Pirelli going to be in? And uh, is it going to be the, I mean, oh dear, is it going to be the lowest attendance in Premier League history? We've got to have a look. What is the attendance? Um, how do we look? Match stats. I don't understand how we fit 6,000 people in. Football manager, sometimes you're just broken because 
I mean, let's zoom out. There are three sides of the ground closed because they're having seats put on them. You're not telling me you can fit 6,000 people in the one stand in the Pirelli at the moment and the total capacity is 7,000. So when we were packed out last season, we had 1,000 people spread out on these three sides that were terracing. That's not how it works, football manager. I don't understand how we've got 6,000 people in now, but when we're done, we're going to have a smaller capacity than what we had previously. How? If we can fit 6,000 people into that one side, we should be able to fit 15,000 in. This is madness. It's like a it's like a pandemic match. But we have scored from a set piece again. It's all about the set pieces. O'Donoghue has been robbed of the goal there. It's gone down as an own goal. Oh, good. We've got VAR now. I, I was looking forward to having VAR in the save for the first time. But Vidovic plays it across to O'Donoghue, who drills it towards that bottom corner. It's Mitoma who scores for me, clearly remembering how well I treated him during my beta save with Brighton this year and has decided to score for me as well. What a, what an absolute legend. Oh, my word. He's trying to make up for his mistake straight away, isn't he? Goodness me. This Brighton team doesn't look like it's changed massively, considering we're what, six, seven years into this save, this is a very familiar-looking Brighton team to the one that I was managing during the beta. Have they signed anybody? The AI in Football Manager is a confusing little rascal sometimes, isn't it? No, Basically no transfers in a gazillion years at a club like Brighton. They've also not sold Evan Ferguson, which seems almost as unrealistic, but O'Donoghue has done brilliantly there. Floats the crossover to Lee Byrne. Oh, he's hit the crossbar. Imagine if we'd have gone 2-0 up. This would have been a, a wonderful day. Brighton at the top of the Premier League at the moment. We're, we're heading for the Champions League, boys and girls. We're just an, an unstoppable force. Lee Byrne should have scored there. Oh, my word. I wonder if Brighton, if he if he did score, I would offer Brighton him as a swap for Ferguson. They're playing him as a deep lying forward, having used Evan Ferguson a lot. I don't think playing him as a deep lying forward is necessarily the best way to utilize Evan Ferguson. That being said, he's probably going to score a hat trick against me now because I've criticized the AI and he's always listening. Look how deep he is. I mean, it, it, deep lying with a capital deep. Matoma's got to be offside there, surely. Where's that VAR when you need it? Ref, that's it. Finger in here. Oh, this is going to be fun, all this VAR stuff this year. But that had to be offside, surely. There we go. See? Love VAR. At the moment, VAR is 2 nil up. Two correct decisions in our exposure to the system. I mean, he wasn't as offside as he looked, was he? Um, was that Sousa over there on the left-hand side? Almost playing him on, but we just about got away with it. I'd have, feel very, I'd have felt very hard done by if we'd have gone in at half-time drawing after that first half that we've had. We deserve to be ahead. We are ahead. Let's have another let's have another set piece goal, please. If we just have to do all of our goals this season from set pieces, then so be it. Open plays for cowards. Right, Popov to Jackson and now Loser, who's just given the ball away in midfield. He doesn't look like an upgrade on Powell yet. Popov play trying to play O'Donoghue in, but Dedic, who actually is a Brighton signing. There you go, they have made a signing. Is that Gray off of Leeds as well? So they've signed a couple of players. I don't know who Rakovic is. I've, okay, they've signed a few players. There's just a few names I recognised, but it is quite a, quite a changed team. As you'd expect, Sousa's done well to win the ball back there, but Gilmore comes across to tackle and uh, Brighton now playing it all the way back to their keeper. And Lee Byrne is going to be a rascal in those kind of situations. So they need to be careful knocking it around the way they're knocking it around because Lee Byrne can capitalise on any kind of sloppy pass. It's kind of what he does that and being a huge threat from set pieces. That's a lovely goal. A frustratingly good goal. No, no doubt that that one was onside either. And that, I mean, that was just a welcome to the Premier League moment because that's a piece of quality that we just haven't seen so far from anybody. And I mean, what are we supposed to do? Evan Ferguson doing a lovely job as a deep line forward. They're absolutely utilising him correctly, of course. Uh, offer some encouragement. We've got to win some home games. We've got to get some points from somewhere. This is going to be a long, hard season. We need some loans, but we need them to be cheap enough for us to get them. What we need is that £80 million you get for playing in the Premier League now. Someone write the, the Burton board and IOU so they realise it's definitely coming, so they let me spend a little bit more of it. The fact that Sunderland were allowed to spend £50 million and we've only been allowed to spend 
what, 28, 29? I know they've got a much bigger ground, so they're making money that way, but ticket money doesn't make you money in the Premier League, does it? It's all about the TV money. You live off the TV revenue, surely. Lee Burn making a nuisance of himself again. He gets better and better as time goes on. I am... I can't believe I ever doubted him towards the end of last season. He's just a nuisance, a rascal. O'Donoghue drills it over to Lieburn. And there he is with his first goal in the Premier League to put us 2-1 up. This front four is going to be so, so important for us this year. O'Donoghue, Vidovic, Lieburn, and of course, Alfie Devine with all the goals he got last year. But these guys are going to be crucial. We're going to concede a lot of goals we just need to make sure we score a lot of goals as well. And Lieburn has his first one in the Premier League. Remember, they're all still quite young as well. All of the, I don't think any of them are over 25 in this front four. They're all going to go on and get better and better. So being able to play regular Premier League football at such a crucial development age, it's handy. There's Lee Byrne again looking to get on the end of a corner. Kitching now brings it down, uh, plays it back to O'Donoghue, across to Jackson. I mean, he is not the man that we wanted shooting from the edge of the area, but he somehow forced another corner. And a corner is uh, basically corners are more threatening than penalties for us. The record we've had with penalties during our time at Burton, I would say we probably have a better conversion rate from corners. So we'll always take a corner rather than a penalty. Um, remains 2-1. Just hold on now, boys. Find a way. Find a way to hold on because I would love three points in this first episode in the Premier League. That would be super duper delightful. Um, right, Lee Byrne is getting tired, but we just, I, I can't imagine Ross Stewart is going to be any use at all to us in the Premier League. So I don't really want to have to bring him on. Alonso is is tiring and on a yellow card. So Simons is going to come on for him. And these are the kind of substitutions, the likes of, I know Stavanovic scored in the last game, but the likes of Simons and Stavanovic, I don't know that they're ever going to be Premier League quality players. So it's it's alarming that they're our backups. Uh, Divine needs to come off, so we're going to bring on Owl for him and move Loser forward again. Um, and then Popov can come off for Stav Lemkin. Um, who is a centre back that we brought in in the summer? He's six foot three, thirty-two international caps. Has been playing for Shakhtar for years, and um, presumably that means he's been playing in Europe as well. He has fourteen European games he played last year, so some decent pedigree on him. Um, we're playing him at right back because we don't have a backup right back, so it's going to be between him and Jackson going out to cover at right back this season. Probably not ideally built to play in the wing back role. We might have to set him up as an inverted fullback, but for now. We're not fiddling. We're just crossing our fingers and hoping that we can hold on and pick up three points. And we can. That is our first our first win in the Premier League ever. We are officially the best Albion that begins with B in the Premier League right now. Which is a night. If we're that at the end of the season, we'll be fine. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, we've still got nearly three weeks until the window closes. So I am going to continue. I mean, I was going to say it, then I stopped saying it. I think I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to continue scraping the barrel, looking for any kind of loans that we can bring in for nothing because we don't really have money to bring anybody in. And hopefully, by the time you see me next, we will have got through the uh, the end of the transfer window, hopefully brought in a couple of players on loan and be ready to play Manchester United away from home. Oh, my word. This is going to be... I'll say again, it's going to be a long, hard season. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.